What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and this is part seven of my top 10 tweak video series. So I just wanted to show you 10 of the newest tweaks, some of which have been updated from iOS 7 to support the latest firmware on iOS 8. Some of them are brand new, you know, for the iPhone 6, and I'm really excited to share all these with you. I always have a good time making these kind of videos because I get to learn a lot too. But anyways, all of these do support iOS 8.1.2, the latest version, and of course, I have tested them both on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, and they do work flawlessly. Now, not all of these are free, some of them are paid, and of course, I'm going to be mentioning all of that in the article, but anyways, to install these, you guys are going to need a couple sources. To get those sources and the full tweak list, click on this link right here, and of course, you guys will need to be jailbroken. Obviously, you cannot do this if you're not jailbroken, so you'll want to jailbreak, and then you can enjoy all of these tweaks on your devices. Now, some of these do work on iPad, not all of them, but most of them are compatible with iPads. All right, and this is the very first one. Now, talk about useless tweaks. This would probably be the very first one on the list. However, it is a very entertaining tweak. It's only for the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus where reachability applies. And let me go ahead and open up an application because you do have to be inside of one to activate it. But anyways, just activate reachability by double tapping and boom, there you go. You just have this nice animation of that Pop-Tart cat, you know, floating above in that extra space that's not being used by anything. So all you have to do is activate it and you can do your stuff down here and have that up there. So it's completely useless. However, it's a nice thing to have. It's pretty entertaining. So reachability tweak, there's not many of them. However, there's many more coming out and there are some useful ones. I actually showed you a couple useful reachability tweaks in my other videos. But anyways, let me show you another one. So this one is called reach weather and let me go ahead and enable it. It does work simultaneously with uh, the other tweak that I just showed you, but it doesn't work very well. It's kind of hard to see. Let me just show you. So it does activate, and as you can see, it's gonna show you, but it does overlay. So let me go ahead and disable that real quick. And now let's just take a look at it real quick. So reach weather pretty much fills up that space with something useful, not just a little cat floating in the air, but it gives you the time. It'll give you the weather of the location that you do set inside of the settings. And in here, as you can see, you can actually enable some extra details and I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with the reachability. It keeps going away. Uh, anyways, in here that you can actually enable a forecast. So it's really cool. That empty space now has useful features inside of it. Thanks to reach weather. Now, of course, in here, you can set your city. You can set custom color, uh, the color for that too. And there's a lot that you can do in here. It's a really extensive little tweak and it basically fills up that empty space that reachability doesn't do anything with, with something useful, including these widgets. Now here's wake info too. And this is a very useful one actually. So if you wake up in the morning, you like to hit snooze and you know, doze off in those few little minutes in between wake info two will make use of that time. And it'll actually read you a whole bunch of information after the alarm rings. So it'll tell you the time, the date, you know, the actual weather, what you have to do, what's in your notifications. It'll actually read off all of that to you after the alarm goes off. And there's quite a bit of settings in here, but basically just keeps you informed after the alarm goes off. And here's actually what it will show you. I just want to go ahead and test it for you. Today is December 21st, 2014. The time now is 4.15 p.m. The temperature at Cupertino is 63 degrees. Sunrise at 7.19 a.m. Battery charged at 77%. As you can see, you can actually choose what you want it to tell you. All of that right there. And it's a very handy little tweak. Not for everybody. However, if you want to be informed after hitting snooze, this thing is actually going to be your friend. Next, here's app box. Just slide right on your lock screen. And here you can get an assortment of applications to shortcut to right from your lock screen. So, you know, the lock is as usual, just slide to the right. However, if you slide to the left, you now have all of these apps right here. And let me just go ahead and show you the settings. All you have to do, boom, it has a really nice animation, just goes straight up. And in here, there are so many settings. I love it how extensive this application is. Anyways, so in here, you can choose which applications you want. So in apps, you can choose here are the standard ones. The standard ones are the ones that I have, but you can add you know any ones from your applications, even throw Insidia in there. So you just have to drag it up uh, from here. And just put it right there and let's just throw Facebook up there just because. So besides that, you can choose how large the icons are, how they're positioned in rows. Let's say we want three rows instead of just two and badges, labels. See how extensive this is. This is really cool. You can choose the color, how transparent they are, how large the icons are. I think it's super cool. So if I just go back to look at it. 
as you can see, it's now different. And now I have an extra space in there, but it's definitely a little cool, lightweight tweak that just brings shortcuts to your lock screen. And of course it does play nice with the security. It will still ask you for the password. If you do have that enabled, it won't just jump right in. So app box, it's a very nice little tweak for your lock screen. Next is any drop. So any drop, pretty much expands your airdrop capabilities. Not only can you send photos and videos, you can send any file now. Now it's a lot like iFile, it has its own individual application. However, let me just show you an example. Let's say I wanna send a track to somebody. So all I would have to do is hold it and then it brings up the settings and I can email it, message it, and there's even more settings in here. But let's say I wanna message to someone, it just puts that MP3 file into the actual message and I could send it. And if someone else is jailbroken, they can add that to their library. Otherwise people can just play it if they're not jailbroken, but cool. You can send songs from your device and it's not just limited to music. You can send any file that your device has. Very extensive tweak. And unlike Air Blue, which is a Bluetooth transfer, this can be sent to any phone, not just an iPhone. This can be sent to Androids too. So very useful tweak for sharing files more than just photos or videos from AirDrop. Now here's folder icons, and this is pretty neat. It's nothing new, it's been updated recently. However, it adds nice icons and colors to your folders. So you open it up, you know, it's just a regular folder. But when it's closed, you have this nice icon on it and you can modify it. And the way you modify it is actually really natural feeling. You just hold the folder to make it wiggle and then you have this gear icon up here. Just click on that guy and now you can modify that folder. So as you can see, I had this icon, you know, it has some presets in here. Let's put these guys are here. It looks a little more iOS 80. Um, and here, let's change it to round gray. Okay, and you can choose the label, choose those settings right there. Otherwise, when you're done, just click outside of it. And cool, that is your folder now. And that looks pretty dang neat. Like something that would be included in iOS 8 open it up and it functions just like any other folder would. Next is scrub around. Now this one stood out to me even though it's very small because of the attention to detail that this Cydia developer had. Now in iOS, as you guys know, the original scrubber for music is a little dash. Now it's circle and it matches the rest of the icons on the control center. You know, it's nothing special. It just stood out to me. This guy looked at it and said, hey, this doesn't match up with other ones. Let me make a circle one and it'll match the rest. So, you know, just adds a circle scrubber to the timeline of your music nothing special but it does match the rest of them all right so for the next one this is called i gotcha it's just been updated it's a pretty old one but it has been updated to support the new iphone 6 6 plus and ios 8. so it's a security tweak this actually adds extra security to your device and i'm going to show you how it works now i did mention this in my top 25 reasons to jailbreak so the way i have it set up right now is if i input two incorrect passcode attempts it's going to go ahead and take a picture of the person that's trying to unlock your device and send the current location to either an SMS or an email. So here we go, 1474, just like random numbers in here. Two incorrect attempts, and here on my email, I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and search, update it, and look at that perpetrator. That's the guy that's trying to break into my phone, and down below it'll send you the location to a Google Maps, and you can go ahead and see where your device is currently located. So I think that's a really cool idea. Apple doesn't have anything like this. It has Find My iPhone, but that's pretty limited. As soon as your device goes off, you're done. Well, with this, it actually does increase the security of your device, and you actually have quite some settings in here. So it can actually prevent the device from being shut down as well. As you guys know, once the device shuts down, there's no more tracking on it, only a last known location. So you can't shut down the device, and same thing, if someone tries to shut it down, they'll take a picture and send it to your email. Extremely useful. It's called I gotcha and I would totally recommend this to anyone. Next, here's custom messages. So custom messages has just been updated to version 2.0 with new features. And I gotta say, it can really revolutionize the way your messages application looks. Just the color alone makes such a big difference. So as you guys know, you know how it goes from green to blue and there's a whole bunch of different color combinations in stock iOS. Well, with this, you can change all the colors and modify any aspect of the messages application. As you guys can see right here, mine starts at dark orange and then goes to lighter yellow. That's everything that I set. There's a lot of settings to it. In the background, I have kind of a peach pinkish color. So I think it matches well. But anyways, in here, so here is where you can modify all of that. Now in my SMS, here are the colors I set. So for the top, if you want a different color, you can set it in here, maybe something a little bit darker, darker red right here. Let's try uh, something like that and yellow. So I think that's good. 
And now when I go back into the messages, it doesn't need a respring. Colors are going to get a little bit darker, as you can see right there. Now here are simpler photos. I really like this one because it simplifies something that's complex in iOS. For example, you know, the photos application. Here's mine. Look at how many categories I have. And I got to choose which one I want. And simpler photos just takes away and simplifies that. You now just have photos, panoramas, and actually your camera roll. Now you can of course choose what goes in here, but it simplifies your photo application and I really like that. Someone saw the need for that and they implemented it. I'm surprised that Apple cluttered it up. Apple's all about simplifying, but not so in iOS 8 apparently. And let me just show you one last one. This is a little bonus from me uh, for number 11. It's a very simple little tweak. All you have to do is in your keyboard, if you want to input your email real quick, I know, you know, in fields or whatever, you just need to put your email real quick, just double tap the at symbol, and there you go. You automatically set it in the settings. You could just double tap that and it adds your email anywhere you need it to. All right, guys, so that's my next top 10 tweaks. If you want some more bonus ones and you want to get the full list for all of these and the sources you need, just click right there to that link and it'll take you to my article and of course to jailbreak right there. And guys, that's the next top 10 tweaks of the week. You know, I will keep you guys updated with any new ones. I really like making these kind of videos, as you guys know. But anyways, I do hope you enjoyed these tweaks. I have plenty of other ones on my channel. So check out all of these other videos. I have a ton. And subscribe if you haven't already. I'm always posting new videos about tweaks, you know, reviews, all sorts of things. And I've got a lot of cool things planned. So stay tuned, guys. Enjoy the tweaks. Have a great day. Peace.